Our next session tonight is entitled Insights in Eight. As the name suggests, this will be a series of eight minute talks. Our three speakers for this session embody the three aspects of change that are the theme for IMPACT 2014 create, transform, and disrupt. First in the series, we'll hear from the creator, Suresh Shankar. Suresh graduated from IIM Calcutta in 1985. He spent many years in sales, marketing, advertising, and media in India before moving to similar roles in Singapore in 1997, where he has lived since. He moved from corporate to entrepreneurial life in the year 2000, when he founded his first company, Red Pill Analytics. Red Pill was acquired by IBM in 2009, and Suresh spent two years with them as global analytics leader. He set up his second company, Crayon Data, in 2012. Suresh is here to share from his personal journey as a creator. Before I hand over to Suresh, um, as dinner will be served while the speakers are talking, a gentle request to please minimize table noise. Thank you, and please welcome Suresh. Good evening, and um, thank you very much. It's a very hard act to follow Tony Fernandez, Pirish Gupta, and the Prime Minister of Singapore. But I shall have to try. So, Prime Minister, distinguished guests, as you know from that introduction, I'm a corporate animal turned two-time entrepreneur, a creator of business. What made me do that? What made me give up corporate life? What made me try to do it again? All good questions. But you know, I was one of those guys who was always one of the bad boys, sat at the back of the class and never answered those questions, so I won't answer them today. And instead, I will share with you three questions, three stories of my life. The story of uh, my brother and me, the story of the Chinese bamboo tree, and the story of God's revenge. Yes, God's revenge. So let me start at the very beginning. When I was born, the first thing that someone in my family probably said was, Suresh didn't come out of the womb the same way as Ravi. You see, Ravi was this very saintly elder brother of mine. You know, he was a do-gooder, he was a class topper, he was always on the honors board, and um, you know, he was that goody two shoes. And I had the fortune, good or bad, of being compared and contrasted with him all my life. Now, while I'm being rebellious inside, I tried to follow. And um, I must say, all I managed to do was like, you know, this meets expectations some of the time, till I reached grade eight. And then I said, this is too how much hard work. I can't be someone else. I can't follow other people's footsteps. So I said, let me fulfill people's expectations of me and actually be different. And being different means you have to make, you can't just say I won't follow someone else's footsteps. You have to make your own choices. And those choices are sometimes unconventional and they're sometimes risky. But they were yet my choices. So my brother topped math and stats and went and studied engineering in IIT. I said, I will forswear math and statistics and science. I went to, decided to go to IIM Calcutta because my teenage idol, who is now one of the top five businessmen in the world, went to IIM Calcutta. I didn't want to spend five years getting there doing engineering, so I did accounting and got there in three. To my horror of horrors, when I get to IIM Calcutta, what do I find? Ravi, my elder brother, one year senior to me. His yearbook entry says, in the second year, he sprang a total stranger on us in the form of a very different younger brother. He was a tutor in statistics, I failed statistics. He was in the top decile, I was in the bottom quartile. Uh, nevertheless, I did manage to graduate from IIM Calcutta, otherwise I wouldn't be here today. And I did manage to land a prize job at a top MNC. I didn't do frightfully well, but after a couple of these, I landed, uh, you know, I finally landed in advertising and I found my groove there. Here was an industry that celebrated creativity, aka being different. My career blossomed and I eventually was rewarded by one of the, you know, at the age, young age of 32, the general managership of a media buying operation, the first of its kind. I was king of the Indian media jungle with every media owner beating a part to my door. Time to be different again, because that's what I am. 
So I uprooted myself from my home and my country and my career without a job in hand to be with the girlfriend of that time. The country I chose was Singapore. The decision was brave or stupid. It depends on whom you ask. But fortune favored me. I found a job with an advertising agency and then I joined a bank. Um, and um, I had the good fortune of meeting this wonderful lady colleague from Hong Kong uh, at that bank. But you know, banks are not places where you're encouraged to be different. Sorry, Piyush, you know, you don't, you're not different in a bank. So I, when at the height of the dot-com boom, somebody came along and said, you know, we'll give you a very senior job in a startup. How could I say no? So I moved. In the 10 days between job A and job B, this startup folded. It didn't even open its doors. So here I was, $30,000 in the bank, no job, and a stranger in a strange land. I felt marooned. Much as I like being different, this was too different, even for me. But you know, my cousin had moved in from New York in a bachelor pad. I'd halved my cost. And Singapore's wonderful policy of encouraging foreign talent means I had acquired a permanent residency so I could stay here. So I said, this is the time. There must be some message in this. Can I actually do uh, something different? So I decided to take the plunge on my own. And in 2000, I set up my first analytic consulting business here based in Singapore. I called it Red Pill. Everybody laughed. And it was inevitably compared to, you know, the blue pill, some of us may be familiar with. But yet, it was different, and nobody asked about our name a second time. So there were the usual startup stories, you know, maxed out credit cards, bitter fights with founders, no cash. But every time I hit rock bottom or I was about to, something miraculous happened that made me stay the course and carry on. It was like the Chinese bamboo tree. Have you heard of the Chinese bamboo tree? Well, you take the Chinese bamboo tree, you fertilize the soil, you water it for one year. Nothing happens. You water it and you fertilize it for one more year. Nothing happens. You're starting to get a bit impatient. You water it and you fertilize it for one more year. Still nothing. This is the time, you know, you're blaming God, the universe, your family, your friends, even your dog. You know, everything is going wrong. But you say, one more year, let me try this one more year, and you water and fertilize the bamboo tree. Nothing. And then because you're a frightfully stupid guy, you turn up for the fifth year, and you try and water this plant again. And somewhere in the fifth year, the Chinese bamboo tree sprouts and grows 90 feet in six weeks. Yes, 90 feet in six weeks. The truth be told, the story of Red Pill, or of every entrepreneur, is like that bamboo tree with the added disadvantage that we cannot really predict which year it will sprout. The Red Pill story ended well. We were acquired by IBM in 2009 in recognition of the cutting edge analytics work that we were doing. And to this date, Red Pill remains one of the few acquisitions IBM has made in Asia and in Singapore. But through those difficult years, there is one thing that I will always remember, and that is the kindness of strangers. Most of the people who gave us business and the people who gave us a leg up in those early years were people I had never met before in my life. Think about it, we pride ourselves on our network of connections and relationships, but that is not what worked for us. It was total strangers. And they did it because we were different. We were small and we had to stand out, but it also strikes me that some of those people actually were relating to the very difference that we had. They wanted to be different. They wanted to associate themselves with people who are creators of their own stories. And in some extent, they were living that vicariously through us. When I look back at my life, I think the universe conspires to give you everything that you really want. I have made many risky and unconventional choices, but I've also ran away from many choices. But you know, I said, I'll talk to you about God's revenge. God and the universe don't like it when you do that. I ran away from maths and stats when I was a youngster. Today, as a head of an analytics firm, I do maths and stats for a living every single day. Chasing my love, I left my home and my culture and my career. That didn't work out for me. 
But the wonderful lady from Hong Kong, whom I mentioned earlier, who is now my wife, left her home and culture and career to adopt mine. And in fact, actually paid the bills and supported me through the difficult days. So as I look back at this, ladies and gentlemen, my wonderful brother, God bless his soul, taught me to be different. The Chinese bamboo tree taught me to be persistent. And God and the universe took their revenge on me by showering on me the kindness of strangers, by giving me the courage to be, create my own story. So I will leave you with these four thoughts. Be different, be persistent, make some unconventional choices, and don't be afraid to create your own story. No one else will do it for you. Thank you.